The European country of Switzerland lies mainly across the Alpine chain, a region at first sight inhospitable to travelers. However, there's a unique railway line running over 250 kilometers from west to east along the backbone of the Alps, passing through some of the most dramatic scenery in Europe. The train which makes this eight-hour journey is known as the Glacier Express, the slowest express train in the world. The service is a joint venture between three of Switzerland's private railway companies, the Big Visp Zemat Railway, the Furka Oberalp Railway and the Raishan Railway, whose meter gauge tracks connect in an unbroken chain. A through service called the Glacier Express was inaugurated in the summer of 1930, the name alluding to the route's proximity to many of Switzerland's major ice sheets. The mountainous region around the resort of Zermatt in the southwest of the country was completely buried by snow during the Ice Age and the Gorner Glacier, the second largest in Switzerland, still covers a wide area along the Swiss-Italian border. Some of the best views of this region can be found at the summit of the Gornergrat, over 3,000 meters above sea level, whose terraces give a commanding panorama over the whole area. The distinctive cone of the Matterhorn, rising almost four and a half thousand meters above sea level, resisted all attempts to climb it until July 1865, when the Englishman Edward Wimper and his companions finally reached the summit. The peak makes a striking backdrop for that special photograph, while a friendly companion will prove that you really have visited Switzerland. Since the summer of 1898, the Gornograt has been connected to Zermatt by a spectacular electric rack railway. This meter gauge line is the second highest in altitude in Switzerland, after the Jungfrau Railway. The track has to lose almost 1,500 meters in height during the 9.35 kilometer journey, and gradients of as much as one in five are necessary. In order to facilitate this, the ABD system of rack assistance is used along the entire length of the track. Zermatt derived its name from Matten, or field, a reference to the farming origins of the local community. Since the 19th century, tourism has become the chief commerce of the village, with numerous visitors able to stroll safely along the car-free streets. Motorists must leave their vehicles further down the valley, so only the special electric carts and the more traditional horse-drawn carriages compete for space on the narrow streets. For our journey across Switzerland, we join the Glacier Express at Zermatt Station, terminus of the BVZ Railway. The first stage of the route runs down the Visp Valley from Zermatt to the town of Brieg on the banks of the River Rhone. The top section of the line is constantly busy, with a frequent shuttle service operating between Zermatt and Tash, where visitors to Zermatt must leave their vehicles in one of the numerous car parks. of our panorama car are dramatic. The Mata Visp Valley is vulnerable to rock falls and in 1991 a huge section sheared away from the face of the mountain crashing down onto the valley below to form a dramatic scree slope. <laughs> Ce 
de ce mouvement à travers la voie ferrée, la route et le hameau de l'Eche. En 10 semaines, une nouvelle voie ferrée de 3 km à Crémaille. The meter gauge line from Zermatt to Visp was inaugurated in 1891 connecting the valley with the newly opened standard gauge railway along the river Rhone between Geneva and Brieg. Visp remained the terminus of the BVZ until 1930, when the line was extended to join the meter gauge Furka Oberalp tracks at Brieg, enabling through running of the Glacier Express service. The wooden houses along the valley have distinctive patchwork roofs made of large slabs of split stone designed to protect the buildings from the thick winter snowfall. The track has to lose over 950 meters in height before reaching Visp, and gradients of up to one in eight mean that five rack sections are needed to assist the steep descent. The ABD rack system was chosen by the Visp Zermatt company, and this was adopted by the Furka Oberalp when they opened their line almost a quarter of a century later. During the first season of operation, some 33,500 passengers made the journey between Zermatt and Visp. A century later, this figure has increased to about 2.5 million travelers a year, 250,000 of whom ride the Glacier Express. At Stalden, the Mattertal is joined by an equally impressive gorge from Saas, the inhabitants of the latter served by the efficient postbus service. Until 1930, trains were steam hauled, but today a modern HGE 442 locomotive pulls our Glacier Express down the line to Brieg, one of the fleet of five machines purchased by the BVZ from SLM in 1990. After Visp, we join the main Rhone Valley and our tracks run alongside the lines of the SBB from Geneva to Brieg, which pass into Italy through the Simplon Tunnel. The BVZ line ends at Brieg, the chief town of the Upper Valais region, which boasts no less than two separate stations. The meter gauge tracks of the BVZ and Foka Oberalp companies lie in the street, just outside the grand complex built in 1878, which is home to the main line SBB and BLS trains, which travel between Italy, France and northern Switzerland. Brieg, lying in the Rhone Valley at the foot of the Simplon Pass, which crosses the Alps into Italy, has been an important settlement since Roman times. The old town is dominated by the Stockalper Palace, once the grandest private residence in the whole of Switzerland. It was built by Caspar Jodok von Stockalper, who controlled the lucrative Simplon Pass trade during the 17th century. The three towers, once used for storage and air drying meat, are named after the three magi. The tallest, naturally, being Caspar. Across the Rhone lies the equally ancient village of Nartes, whose painted church tower dates back to the 12th century. 
Its cobbled streets contain many old wooden houses made bright by colourful flower displays. Although this appears at first sight to be an urban community, its agricultural connections are still in evidence. Many of the barns are built on stone staddles to prevent the precious grain being eaten by rats, and traditional farming methods are still practised here. The Glacier Express is now about to run over the rails of the Furka Oberalp Company from Brieg as far as Decentis. A Furka locomotive has been attached to the front of our train together with a restaurant car, one of the Raetian Railway's fleet of dining coaches which will serve tempting meals during the course of the journey. Just outside the station, we pass under the tracks of the SBB and cross the River Rhone, whose course we will follow almost to its source. A line along the Upper Rhone Valley was proposed at the end of the 19th century, but it wasn't until 1910 that the Brieg Fokker Decentis Railway Company was founded. The following spring, work began on the first section of track, but the terrain was difficult, and it was not until 1915 that the section from Brieg to Gletsch, just below the Rhone Glacier, was opened. The BFD soon ran into financial difficulties, and the line closed in the early 1920s. In 1925, the Furka Oberalp Company took over the railway and not only renovated the abandoned track, but completed the building of the route to Decentis. At Betten, our tracks pass the base station of the Betmeralp cable car, whose red and white cabins whisk visitors swiftly up the valley side to the picturesque village nestling in the sunny Alp. Like Zamat, a car-free zone. A second cableway takes us to the top of the mountain ridge to give us the opportunity of visiting one of the natural wonders of this region. The Aletsch Glacier, the longest ice sheet in Europe, runs for 23 kilometers and extends for over 100 square kilometers. The glacier meltwaters flow into the River Rhone and onto the Mediterranean. Its sources are the spectacular snow and ice basins found behind the impressive peaks of the Jungfrau and Monk, which divide Canton Valais from the Bernese Oberland. It lies at an altitude of over 2,000 meters above sea level, and the ice is estimated to be about 800 meters thick below the Concordia Platz, where three huge ice rivers combine to form the main glacier. The glacier is hidden behind the mountain ridge which runs along the left-hand side of our train for the next section of our journey. After Betten, the track must rapidly gain height and the increased gradient means that we must join the rack for the first time along the Furka section of the route.
Almost a quarter of the Furka line is rack assisted and the abd system is used, with the double row of teeth between the rails interlocking with a cogwheel beneath our locomotive and coaches. The two parallel rows ensuring constant meshing to keep our train securely engaged at all times. At Grengioles, there's a large step in the valley floor, and our tracks need to gain the necessary height to climb over the ridge. This proved a real challenge to the railway builders, whose solution was to artificially lengthen the line by means of a spiral tunnel. The train crosses the River Rhone over a 48-metre high viaduct, the loftiest on the Furka Oberalp network. The gradient of 1 in 11 is maintained inside the tunnel, so we must continue to use rack assistance, this being the only rack spiral tunnel found anywhere in Switzerland. The tunnel runs for almost 600 metres, with a line now emerging about 60 metres above the lower portal of the bore. We've reached an altitude of over 1,000 meters above sea level, though we must still gain an additional 1,000 meters before reaching the summit of the line. The loco hauling our train is one of the eight Fokeroberalp HGE442 machines purchased in the 1980s from SLM with electrical equipment by BBC. They have a maximum speed of 30 km per hour along the rack, increasing to 90 km per hour along the adhesion section of the line. Two of the locos, numbers 104 and 105, were purchased from the SBB where they'd been in service as prototype machines running along the scenic meter gauge Brunig line. We're now entering the Goms region of Canton Valais, a fertile rural area, the grassy meadows of which are interspersed with picturesque villages. The village of Ernen, across the valley from our tracks, was formerly the principal settlement of the region, with its own court of justice and local government. There are many interesting old buildings clustered around the square, including the Tellen House, which has 16th century wall paintings depicting the Swiss folk hero William Tell shooting the apple from his son's head, the oldest known representation of the legend in the world. The sun-darkened chalets are resplendent with flowers during the warm summer months, while in winter the bare wood forms a striking contrast to the dazzling white snow. The region is popular with winter sports enthusiasts and well-used cross-country ski routes run the entire length of the Upper Goms Valley. Although this appears to be a leisurely form of exercise in contrast to the speed of downhill skiing, it is in fact deceptively strenuous. Our summer journey continues through the lush countryside along the Rhone Valley.
The village of Niederwald in the Goms was the birthplace of César Ritz, the famous hotelier and founder of the Ritz Hotel chain. King Edward VII of England, one of his patrons, is said to have called him the hotelier of kings and the king of hoteliers. Other members of his family are equally renowned in Switzerland for creating superb church furnishings and decorations. The panorama coaches in which we're traveling give superb views from their large windows. They were brought into service in 1993, especially for travelers on the Glacier Express, and were designed by the Italian company Pininfarina, better known for their work on exotic Ferrari and Lamborghini sports cars. The wooden shed at Munster station contains a survivor from the earliest years of the Glacier Express. Steam locomotive number four was one of the ten HG34 rack machines purchased by the Brieg Fokker Decentis Company from SLM in 1913 and 1914. She worked for almost 50 years before being withdrawn from regular service. Sister locomotive number three has been part of the extensive fleet at the railway museum at Blonay Chambay since 1969 one of the first locomotives they acquired. She and her fellow locos were responsible for hauling the newly opened Glacier Express service during the 1930s. Four of the class were sold to Vietnam in 1947, although two have been repatriated by the Dampfbahn Fokker Bergstrecke. Experiments to replace steam took place as early as 1927 when two petrol engine rack rail cars were purchased. They were mainly used for local winter services but were superseded when electrification of the line took place in the early 1940s. A total of six HGE441 locomotives were then bought from SLM with electrical equipment by MFO and these became a familiar sight at the head of Glacier Express trains. In the 1980s, the HGE442 machines replaced the earlier series. Their sleek lines and modern appearance complement the streamlined panorama wagons, while the period restaurant car is a reminder of the history of this train. Passengers on the Glacier Express have the opportunity to enjoy a delicious meal during the course of the journey. The mouth-watering dishes on the menu can be enjoyed with a special Glacier Express Swiss wine. Unique tilted glasses allow the beverages to remain unspilt even on the steepest gradients. The waiters are kept constantly busy making sure food arrives from the galley piping hot. Portions are generous and the fare extremely appetizing. And to round off the meal, the waiter is happy to demonstrate his skill at pouring a small schnapps to accompany the coffee.
Ulriken lies at the junction of the Rhone Valley with the Nuffinen Pass, the highest in Switzerland, which connects the Goms with Canton Ticino on the south side of the Swiss Alpine chain. At Oberwald, we enter a new tunnel which diverts the tracks in an arc to the northwest of the village. Originally, the line ran above ground along the mountainside towards Gletsch, passing the spectacular Rhone Glacier before entering a summit tunnel just over 2,000 meters above sea level. Because of the altitude, the line from Oberwald to Realp was only possible from May to October, with deep snowfall blocking the tracks for five months of the year. At the start of every winter, the route had to be secured with overhead catenary masts and wires removed and put into storage to prevent damage. In the spring, the tracks had to be cleared of snow and the line made ready to resume normal running, a costly and time-consuming business involving a large amount of manpower. The Steffenbach Bridge caused particular problems as it lay across an avalanche path. In 1925, the original stone structure was replaced by a specially designed folding bridge, the central span of which was lowered in the autumn and winched back into place when the line reopened. The wish to run an all-year-round service led to the building of a base tunnel between Oberwald and Realp. Excavations began from either end in the autumn of 1973, but work progressed slowly, with miners toiling in great heat and 100% humidity. The breakthrough took place on the 30th of April 1981, though the first train was not able to pass through the tunnel until June the following year. At 15,407 metres, this is the longest narrow-gauge tunnel in the world, and the longest railway tunnel lying entirely within Switzerland's borders. Our train passes across the River Rhone for the last time before entering the Furka base tunnel. In common with the rest of the line, there's single track running through the bore, although two passing loops allow trains to cross. As well as enabling the Glacier Express to operate all the year round, the new excavation also allows a car transporter shuttle to run between the Goms and the Andermatt region. We emerge at Realp, where it's still possible to make a trip along part of the old line, as a preservation group, the Dampfbahn Völker Bergstrecke, operates a limited service for tourists during the summer. The train has passed over the cantonal boundary inside the tunnel, and we're now travelling through Canton Uri, one of the three original groups to found the Swiss Confederation in 1291. Other regions gradually joined the alliance and today Switzerland comprises 26 cantons and half cantons with a federal parliament in Bern. We've also crossed the watershed of the Rhone and Royce rivers and now run along the Ursuren Valley. Our way winds gently downhill towards Andermatt, following the Furker Royce River, whose waters will flow through Lake Lucerne before joining the River Rhine.
The village of Hospenthal lies at the junction of the Ursuline Valley with the Gotthard Pass Road and has been a strategic strong point for centuries. The 13th century tower, now a ruin, was once the stronghold of the rulers of this valley. Andermatt station is a busy junction at which all trains must stop. Our driver will leave our train here to take on other duties. As well as the main line between Brieg and Dissentis, a branch runs down the steep Scholenen Gorge to Gershenen, where passengers can make the connection with the Swiss Federal Railway's Gotthard line. The Scholenen Railway was opened in 1917 and operated independently until 1961 when it was taken over by the Furke Oberalp. It forms a vital link between the east-west line along which we've been running and Switzerland's premier north-south route. The road through the Schlenen is part of the Gotthard route opened up after the gorge was successfully bridged in the 12th century. The old bridge, last rebuilt in 1830, is now a pedestrian way as a new bridge was constructed in the 1950s to take the increasing car traffic. Due to the rugged nature of the valley, the line is enclosed in tunnels and avalanche galleries for much of its course. Virtually the whole of the Schlenen barn is rack assisted, with gradients as steep as 1 in 5.5. The line must lose 330 meters in height during the 3.8 kilometer journey. At Gershenen, our meter gauge tracks run alongside the SBB standard gauge line which passes through the northern portal of the Gotthard Tunnel on its way south towards Italy. The bore passes under the Alpine chain deep below Andermatt. The village of Andermatt grew up in the Urseren Valley where the Gotthard, Furka and Oberau passes meet. The cobbled high street contains a variety of beautiful buildings, many dating back to the 18th century. The numerous hotels reflect Andermatt's importance as a staging post and more recently as a year-round holiday destination. The summer sun tempts visitors to linger in the village, while in winter sports lovers can take to the surrounding slopes where deep snow provides endless fun for every member of the family. After Andermatt, our track must climb up the mountain ridge with the line looping back and forth in order to gain the necessary height. For the next stage of our journey, we ride the Glacier Express in January, with the snow transforming the landscape into a magical winter wonderland. The train once more engages the rack to tackle the gradients of one in nine which lie ahead. The track has to climb almost 600 meters in height before reaching the summit of the route at Oberalp.
We've now reached the end of the first level of track and passed through the 207 meter long Butzen tunnel to double back on ourselves some 18 meters higher than when we entered the bore. The stunning views down the valley are now visible from the left hand windows. The chairlift, taking skiers from Andermatt to Nächsten, passes almost over the 284 meter long horseshoe tunnel at the end of the second level. The Rufenen Tunnel, at 300 meters the longest of the three, swings us back on ourselves for the run along the ridge, for we'll make the final curve back to Nation in the open air. Since Andermatt, we've gained more than 400 meters in height, and the way now eases for a time, so rack assistance is unnecessary. We must make a final effort to reach the summit, so the train engages the rack for the run along the wild Oberalpreuss Valley. This austere landscape is home to marmots, a furry alpine rodent whose burrows now lie buried deep beneath the snow. In summer, keen-eyed travelers can enjoy the sight of them playing beside the track or sunbathing on a warm rock. Our train enters what appears to be a further tunnel, but summer reveals it to be a gallery which overlooks the Oberalp Lake. Mm -hmm. 
Oberalpar station at 2,033 meters is the highest station not only on the Furka Oberalp stretch, but on the entire Glacier Express route. It lies on the boundary between cantons Uri and Graubünden, and the Glacier Express stays within the latter canton for the remainder of the journey to Saint Moritz. With the rack now helping with the braking of our train, we begin to descend. The track is protected from avalanche danger by a long tunnel and gallery complex. The river Rhine rises in the mountains behind our train and the young waters here will flow through northern Switzerland, Germany and the Netherlands before entering the North Sea. After St. Bridas Chapel, we leave the rack as the valley opens out and the way becomes more gentle. The village of Sedrun is the chief settlement of the Tujec community, who came here in the Middle Ages over the Furka and Oberau passes from the Valais region. Romange, a direct descendant of Latin, is spoken locally. This is the fourth of Switzerland's official languages, together with German, French and Italian. Descentis station is the terminus of the Furka Oberaup company. Here it makes an end-on connection with the Raetian railway. The village of Descentis Musta is the largest settlement along the Vorder Rhine Valley. It's dominated by the Abbey of St. Martin, founded by an Irish monk, Sigisbert, about 700 AD, and one of the oldest Benedictine foundations in the whole of Switzerland. The simple hermitage was rapidly enlarged and the abbey today is on a grand scale, the ornate church being completely rebuilt at the end of the 17th century. 
The monastery still houses the school, which has existed here since medieval times, and whose excellent reputation today attracts pupils from all over Switzerland. At the station, the Furka Oberalp logo has been removed, and our Glacier Express set combines with another working as it prepares for the remainder of the journey to St. Moritz. In the second part of our journey with the Glacier Express, we'll travel along the Raetian Railway through the spectacular scenery of Canton Graubünden to St. Moritz. The line runs along the base of the majestic Rhine Gorge, where the river has carved a deep chasm forming sheer white cliffs. The train makes a reversal at Kur, the capital of Canton Graubünden. We can take the opportunity to visit the town's historic medieval quarter, which contains numerous picturesque houses, charming squares and winding streets. Travelling southwards, we'll cross the Rhine Bridge at the confluence of the rivers, before running along the scenic Albula line. The route lies beside romantic castles and through dramatic mountain scenery. The railway will take us through rugged terrain, which caused the builders to erect many spectacular bridges, including the famous Landwasser viaduct, while the route from Begun to Preda will include the famous spiral tunnels. After passing through the Albula tunnel, almost six kilometers long, the train will emerge in the beautiful Engadine Valley, famous for its champagne climate. We'll end our journey at the fashionable resort of St. Moritz, the playground of the rich and famous in both summer and winter. Either in the crisp white snow of winter or the flower-decked meadows of summer, the fabulous Glacier Express takes you on a journey through Switzerland that is truly unforgettable.